bit, I'm going to talk about and show images of ischemic stroke. Stroke is the second cause of death worldwide and if you survive, there is a 50% chance of having disability after stroke. There have been campaigns in many countries to inform the public about the symptoms of stroke, such as slurred speech, arm weakness or an uneven face. And this is a reason to dial the emergency number and go with an ambulance to the ER and be seen by a neurologist because time is brain. Neurons can only survive five minutes in ischemia, which is much shorter than cells in your heart or in your kidney, who can survive 20 minutes in ischemia. And because time is brain, the neurologist is going to ask for imaging as soon as possible and start treatment as soon as possible. A chemic stroke can be caused by a thrombus or an embolus and the most common large vessel of the brain that is involved is the MCA. The middle cerebral artery is the largest vessel of the brain and it also makes sense if you know the anatomy of the internal carotid artery because the MCA is just going straight on whereas the ACA is making a more acute angle with the carotid artery. The risk factors for stroke are age and cardiovascular risk factors. And for me, stroke is more a vascular disease with neurological consequences than a purely neurological disease. Imaging in stroke was simple when I started doing radiology 20 years ago because the only treatment option there was was intravenous thrombolysis with a three hour window. So we did a non contrast CT and had to rule out hemorrhage because, of course, if there's a hemorrhage, you're not going to give thrombolysis. And you also had to check if there was no visible ischemia, no visible hypodensity in more than one third of the MCA territory because if you had hypodensity and ischemia in a large part of the MCA territory there was a high risk of hemorrhagic transformation after thrombolysis. If you did not have one of these two things patients would get IV thrombolysis within the three hour window. Some of these patients had a normal CT and some of these patients had subtle abnormalities such as obscuration of the basal ganglia or an insular ribbon sign or some sulcal effacement. Sometimes you could also see a dense vessel sign which is the thrombus in the MCA and this corresponds to the occlusion that you see on this CTA. The last decade imaging in stroke has changed a lot because the treatment of stroke has changed a lot. As mentioned, neurons survive only 5 minutes in ischemia. And in ischemic stroke, there are different parts of the brain that is infarcted. There's the core, and the neurons in the core are dead upon arrival in the hospital. And there's also the penumbra. And in the penumbra, the cerebral blood flow is decreased a little bit. There is some compensation by collaterals, if lucky. And the neurons try to extract more oxygen from the blood by dilating the vessels. This image illustrates some anastomosis between the ACA and MCA branches that can serve as collaterals and there are also collaterals coming off the meningeal arteries and it also illustrates that the central artery and the angular artery these M4 branches are small arteries that cannot be reached for endovascular treatment you can only get in the main stem of the MCA endovascular. 
The penumbra is salvageable, but it can become part of the infarction if the vessel occlusion persists. So about a little bit more than a decade ago, they started thinking, what if we go into the artery and if there is a lot trum a, a, a big thrombus or a big embolus, we retrieve that with either intra-arterial thrombolysis or with mechanical thrombectomy. And one of the large studies was done in the Netherlands. It was a multi-center study focusing on the anterior circulation in 500 patients. And they were randomized into getting the um, IV thrombolysis that was state-of-the-art at that time or having intra-arterial thrombolysis or thrombectomy as well. And they concluded that intra-arterial treatment was effective and safe if done within six hours. And this was a big game changer. So besides an intravenous window of three hours, we now also have an intra-arterial window of six hours. And when we do imaging in stroke nowadays, there is a non-contrast CT. If there's no hemorrhage, the neurologist can give the intravenous thrombolysis already. And then there is CT perfusion and CT angiography. The CT perfusion is to determine the core and the penumbra of the infarction. And the CT angiography is to determine the location of the occlusion for the interventional radiologist. And if the core is small and the penumbra is big, it's useful to do intra-arterial thrombolysis. If there's only core, there's not much to save and the risks don't outweigh the benefits. So in the core, there's a decrease in both CBF and CB volume. In the penumbra, there is a decrease in the cerebral blood flow and as mentioned the capillaries and the blood vessels dilate so the mean transit time of the blood in the penumbra is longer so the cerebral blood volume in the penumbra is maintained or even increased so by determining the mismatch between the cbf and the cbv images you can determine the core and the penumbra you cannot salvage the penumbra um, unlimitedly because after 24 hours there is disintegration of the blood brain barrier in the penumbra and then a very interesting process with microglial cells and pericytes starts so stroke is not a vascular disease but more a blood brain barrier disease this is an example of a 64 year old male presenting with headache and acute aphasia. His non-contrast CT was unremarkable. On his perfusion CBF map, you can see that there's hyperperfusion posterior in the superficial part of the MCA territory without abnormalities on the CBV. So indeed, the capillaries are, the blood vessels are dilated with an increased MTT. So there is a mismatch. And there's a lot of tissue that can be saved, so this is a good candidate for intra-arterial thrombolysis. The window in the anterior circulation is now six hours. There's some debate about that, for, for example, in patients who wake up with a stroke, if it should be longer. And for the posterior circulation, there's also some discussion if it should be four and a half or six hours. Computers can be helpful. And you can set thresholds and have the computer visualize and calculate the volumes of core and penumbra. In our hospital, we have a semen scanner and the core is red and the penumbra is yellow. If you use rapid software, it's, the core is purple and the penumbra is green. It doesn't matter what colors you have, you should be knowing what you're doing. And you should always be knowing what you're doing because there are stroke mimics in the acute setting. And this is a nice example of a 77 year old woman presenting with motor impairment, hemi neglect on the right side and aphasia, an unremarkable non-contrast CT, no large vessel occlusion on the CTA and abnormal CBF and 
the neurologists in my hospital are very good and if you're watching as a neurologist you are probably frowning already because the right-sided symptoms and the aphasia point to the left hemisphere with a stroke in the left hemisphere you would expect a eye deviation towards the side of the stroke so towards the left side but this patient had a conjugate eye deviation to the right which is indicative of um, activation of the frontal gaze center and of a seizure and indeed there was hyperperfusion in the left temporal occipital region with also hyperperfusion in the pulvinar in the left hemisphere and in the next video I'm going to talk about periictal and postictal changes on CT and MRI so 